Bidri art is a form of metalworking from India that hasn't changed in 600 years. The eight-step process involves molten metals, hours of chiseling, and an eye for detail. The secret ingredient? A special soil that can only be found inside a fort in the city of Bidir. But in an industry with already tight profit margins and expensive raw materials, the art form may not be around for much longer. To see how it's still standing. Bidri art begins with metal casting. An artisan uses a finished piece to make the mold. He piles sand on top and packs it as tightly as possible with the help of his body weight. Now the mold is ready to cast a new piece. The worker melts pieces of zinc and copper over a small fire. Then he pours the molten metal into the mold. It takes about five minutes for the metal to cool and solidify. Then it's time to reveal the final shape. Mohammed Ibrahim takes on buffing and polishing, using one of the only pieces of modern equipment in the workshop. Then he covers the piece with a copper sulfate solution. This creates a chalkboard-like surface for the artisans to sketch out a design. They begin to chisel away at the metal, following the sketch. It's the most time-consuming part of the process. Sometimes they spend an entire day chiseling. Next, the artisan hammers a silver or gold wire into the engraving. It's detailed work that takes patience and good eyesight. That's why this glasses salesman comes by the workshop every month. Meanwhile, another worker welds the pieces together to form a vase. Then it goes through a few rounds of buffing, filing, and cleaning. Finally, workers boil together water, soil, and aluminum chloride. They soak the piece in the hot mud to give it the signature black color. The wire resists the coloration, so the design stands out against the dark background. The soil used in this process is what makes Bidri art unique. It comes from a 600-year-old fort, which is just about three miles away from Mohammed Salimuddin's workshop. He says a chemical used in the fort's construction gives the soil a special quality. Mohammed says Bidri artisans have never been stopped by security. But before taking the soil, he checks the quality. The fort was built by the Bahamani dynasty. They're credited with bringing metal workers from Iran and popularizing bidriware between the 14th and 15th centuries. The art flourished through the 1800s, when it was showcased at exhibitions in Europe. But a fall in demand towards the end of the 20th century and the rising cost of silver in the 2000s put a strain on artists' livelihoods. The pandemic has also raised export costs and kept tourists from visiting Bidr slashing Mohammed's sales. In 2019, the sale was 10% this year. 10% sale. Now, I don't know how many years it will be for the industry. Today, 
Muhammad says there are around 10 workshops in Bidr, but he worries they won't be around for much longer. Muhammad has managed to stay in business by expanding his market with online sales. He sells pieces at his brick and mortar shop too, just a short walk from the artisan's workshops. A vase that takes up to three days to make goes for 3,000 rupees, or $41. Muhammad says he purposefully prices his goods to just about break even, to keep turnover high. The pieces that require more time and resources cost more, like this bust. It took 20 days to make, and it's selling for 60,000 rupees or just over $800. And this plate that took nearly two months to make cost 200,000 rupees, or about $3,000. Hardships aside, Muhammad is happy, so long as the whole industry works together. I want to be satisfied with my business, but I want to be satisfied with my work. I want to be a business in the industry. Muhammad 